Good morning, Gracie. How are you doing today? Hello, uh, very well, thank you. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Very excited to talk about the new book, The Last Fallen Realm, because this is going to be a summer read. This is what what young adults are going to be taking with them when they go to the beach. <laughs> that would be amazing if they did. <laughs> to put yourself in right back in here again with with the books. I mean, because it it's it's got to be like a sport or a game to be able to be that author, put it out here for readers to to attach themselves to, and then you're back in your game again writing new books. What is that journey like for you? Oh, you know, um, it's the most interesting thing because. Um, as you all know, the the time that it takes after writing a book and completing the book and then when it comes out into the world is quite a large amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so by the time that you're, you know, for example, right now, me talking about and promoting my my last book in this series, I'm already working on a new one. Yep. So it's a, you really do have to pull yourself out and put yourself back into old me and remember what that was like. So it's a really fun experience, actually. It's almost like walking down memory lane a little. Well, I'm so I'm so glad that you said that that it's fun because so many people think that well I'm not getting that time back so why should I write and it's like no you you got to follow the path of Gracie Kim because she makes it fun and she puts <laughs> messages in those paragraphs. I mean, you really do work it. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. I mean, I think ultimately my wish is to entertain. You know, I just want people to be able to pick up my books and be transported and experience magic and adventure and just have a good time. And if they can take away some messages that I'm hoping to share, I mean, that's just an extra added bonus. You talk about that magic. You are really good at bringing that magic forward. As the author and creator, how do you envision the magic before it becomes words on a page? I wish I could say I envisage it, but I really don't. I mean, I, I'm a plotter, right, as mm-hmm. opposed to a panther, as in I don't write by the seat of my pants. I really do outline and plan yep. before I write. Uh, but at the same time, I, I feel like the really, yeah, kind of the mysterious, magical stuff, that's the stuff that happens without me realizing and it's only afterwards and looking back, I'm like, ooh, where did that come from? And, <laughs> and what does that mean? <laughs> does it appear in dreams or while you're driving down the road, all of a sudden this idea comes to you and you're going, whoa, there we go, here we go, let's have some fun with this? Sometimes it comes out like that, although those types of ideas are usually at the very beginning of um, a world or a new series where I have those kind of, oh, how about this? And oh, maybe I could include that. I find that when I'm in a series, um, the ideas come more, um, like they almost kind of jump out. Yeah, yeah. So um, I love this idea of that creative well, you know, that creators have this well and they fill it. Uh, when they're not creating or writing, they, they're filling it with things they're reading, things they're watching, conversations that they've been part of, or that good, or life, being in nature, just experiencing, yeah. I was going to say, I'm so glad that you said that. And the reason why is because so many readers really, they dive in and it's book after book after book after book. I I, I want to make sure that the reader knows you've got permission to be a writer as well. Go enjoy both sides of that imagination. Absolutely. I think we're all storytellers. I think being human is to be a storyteller. And it just so happens that some of us, you know, do it in this very specific form with with written word. But I agree. I absolutely agree. And I think once you fill that creative well with life, essentially, and everything that we consume and enjoy, um, then when you do exercise that muscle to write, I think we surprise ourselves because all that stuff is already there. You just have to pull from it and, and pull it together in a way that only you can. I think that is creativity. Yeah. Do you believe in the theory that, you know, like when, when you do have a, a book like The Last Fallen Realm, uh, you know, people will say, well, I want, I want to do uh, books of magic. I want to do things where, there, where there's adventure. You've got to be able to read those books before you can write about them. Isn't that correct? You have, you have to be able to follow the plan. Uh, I really do think it's important if you want to write in a certain age category or a certain genre to, to know what's happening in that area. Uh, uh, children's writers I meet 
well, I wouldn't say a lot, but some children's writers I meet uh, are reading books that were published decades ago, you know, and I think that's also incredible. We can draw, like I said, ideas from everywhere, but um, it is really exciting to know what's happening currently right now um, in the contemporary world. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. At the same time, some of my most interesting ideas have come from reading completely outside of what I would normally read. <laughs> so I would say just read. Read everything. <laughs> <laughs> in your heart, who is Riley? Have you met Riley in real life or is it just a character? I think essentially Riley is a little bit of me uh, put in a completely different world. Yeah, and I don't think I meant for her to become that way, but I think um, it was just as a process, um, so much of me got pulled into her. I would say a lot of me is not her, um, but a lot of me is also her. Um, and I wonder if I'll say that for every character I ever write, I wonder, um, because you know we are such a multitude um, as humans. There is so much inside us that is contradictory uh, and um, there is so much to pull from. But I do feel like there is a lot of me in Riley though. Mm -hmm. Now, in putting the books together, I'm sure you do research. And the reason why I bring this up is because I'm a third Don Taekwondo. And, and the thing is, is that in order for us to grow in mm -hmm. any level of Taekwondo is we had to study the history and the origin of where it came from. Do you do the same thing with your stories? You've got to go get the history. Or are you creating history by writing the characters? Mm, I think there is a definite given, like a pull and what do you call it, push and pull there. Yeah. Because for sure, I think it's important to learn the history because if we don't know where we came from, how do we draw from it and, and take it to the next level? Um, what I found really actually quite challenging is that because so many of these Korean mythological stories and folk tales were passed down orally, it was very difficult to know what was accurate, quote unquote. And what I quickly discovered is that actually when it comes to mythology and folk tales, it is as accurate as the storyteller who tells it. Um, and they change naturally over time because uh, storytellers add flair. It's adapted to the modern environment. Um, these things are a natural progression of, of story. And so that gave me a lot of um, uh, confidence, I guess, yeah. to really put my own creative spin on these stories. So that's been a lot of fun for me, uh, but also being able to draw from, from where these stories come from. What's your daily dis discipline for writing? Do you go in, you give yourself three hours or a certain amount of pages? <laughs> I have none. <laughs> Can you please give me some discipline? That would be great. <laughs> um, no, I find uh, I'm very focused. My poor little daughter, who's three, um, struggles to find me even when I'm right next to her when I'm in that mode because yeah. I'm just so lost and I would I would rather do that than you know be eating or sleeping because I'm so focused and then when I'm out I'm out yeah so I really actually admire writers who can do that thing where they go in every morning and they put some time aside and they just turn that muscle on and they do the thing and they come out and they repeat again the next day oh. do that so far, I haven't found a way to do that very effectively, but perhaps it's, it's just more practice. <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime in the future, Gracie. <laughs> the door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> you too. Thank you.